Afternoon all, it's Matt here with an update on my Arduino powered MQTT wall controller project. Um, I'll tell you what that is, it's basically a glorified light switch. Um, it sits in a double faceplate in place of your light switch in every room, you might have two in a room, um, and it allows you to control individual lighting circuits, light scenes as well, as well as other aspects of home automation that you might have in your automation hub. Um, so that's multi-room audio, electric blankets, MVHR systems, that's ventilation heat recovery systems, um, central heating of course, um, electric blinds, the whole shebang, um, and it works, and it's pretty cool, and I'm going to show you it right now. Uh, I've introduced um, the downloading of settings and values for a given um, zone or room uh, from a server to the Arduino um, each time it boots up. Um, as well as a diagnostic mode, which kind of gives you stats on whether stuff was downloaded correctly um, and some other stats as well. Um, and a bit of icon design, a bit of kind of title spacing, things like that. Um, and a whole load of extra functionality. Ugh, this is one very messy desk um, for which I apologise. Um, you might have noticed actually that I'm using a new display. Um, this is a 256, another 256 by 64 OLED display, but this time it's white. Strangely, it looks a bit cyan blue um, in this uh, video, but I can assure you it's a lovely white colour. Um, the other thing that you might have noticed, uh, this is from buydisplay.com by the way, for $23 plus a little bit of shipping, only a couple of dollars shipping um, from Shenzhen, China. Um, it's a lovely, lovely display, slightly bigger than the old one, um, and the pin headers are on the right hand side, um, which is really good for saving space for um, what I'm trying to do. The other thing you might notice is um, that this is the wall panel uh, faceplate, which I'm going to be putting holes and squares in. Um, using a water jet cutter service up north. Um, 50 quid for a minimum order of 10, which is, I think, very, very good indeed. Um, there's going to be a hole for the rotary encoder. That's this thing here. It's a turny, pushy thing. Um, and then a square hole for this display, and then five little holes for the favourites buttons, and then one little hole for the select button. That's the mode select button on the left-hand side. Also, you can see I've got a little hookup wire to there. Um, probably you've guessed it is now a touch sensitive capacitive um, thing which brings it out of sleep mode. Um, and then the lights go off there and then the display dims. And now after the display dims, it kind of switches off so it doesn't keep you awake at night. Um, so when you go up to it, you can just kind of hover your hand um, hovering works from about 10 centimetres. I've actually got it set at the moment so you have to touch it to bring it on, but it does work when you hover. Um, I think all control surfaces should have such um, systems because they're very easy to integrate. That is my touch sensor IC just there, um, and it's uh, doing a lovely job. Lots of mega ohms of resistance to, um, to tie that up high um, because that's how you need to do touch sensors. So here's a quick rundown of what it does. Basically, when you turn this thing on, it downloads not only the current light um, values of the different circuits in the room, but also it downloads the settings such as light circuit names. Um, so the words like ceiling and wall and angle poise are not stored in the Arduino. Um, this is very important because I might change the circuits on a regular basis um, or I might change what I want to control. Um, so this is all stored at the server end in OpenHab and um, the Arduino sends a little MQTT message at startup saying, light, uh, you know, how many light circuits are there? Gets a response, six. Okay, can I have light circuit number one level and light circuit number one name and like it's light circuit number two level and light circuit number two name, etc. And it keeps kind of iterating through all of the settings and values and just downloads them to the Arduino at startup. So I can always, um, every time I restart the thing, it's going to get the latest settings, um, which makes it quite extens extensible, if that's the word. Um, so that's great. So I've got individual control of circuits using this rotary controller and a press to change the circuit. Um, and also I've got these um, light scenes that are controlled by these five buttons. I'll give you an example of one. So I'm going to turn the lights from low up to full by pressing this button here. When I do so, watch what happens. 
that goes up to 100 and 100 and the lights have come on very brightly um, I'm going to turn them down because I don't like that kind of bright light um, you can see I've only got I've got three uh, circuits defined in my bedroom but I'm actually only in the real world I've got two um, but in the new home I will have hopefully four um, per room which is exciting so that's mode light um, we can cycle through modes um, so light is number one and it always defaults back to light mode um, audio is mode two I'm going to play some music. I'll hit my first favourite button, which was jazz. And that's the random track that is set um, uh, to play randomly from the, the jazz genre. I can press it again to get... An, oh no, wrong mode. I can press it again to get another random jazz track. You might be able to hear that. I'll turn it up and I'll show you the volume being updated in real time. And I'll press pause. And you'll see the pause button. So yeah, as you can see, it's um, track, artist, play, pause, and volume. Um, and then we've got these five. Um, uh, we've got these five favourites. I've only actually got three plus one dummy favourite there. Um, so that's that. And then we've got other modes. Uh, temperature mode. Now that 9 degrees, uh, I haven't finished work on this mode as you can see, but that 9 degrees is the actual readout of the temperature in London where I live. Um, uh, and it takes it from Yahoo Weather using an XSLT, XSLT um, uh, translation in OpenHab server, which is quite, um, quite fun. Um, that mode will also be used, just going to turn the volume down because it's bugging me. Um, that mode will also be used for setting the room temperature. Um, so underneath that, I'm going to have a set temperature, um, and that number will actually be showing the current room temperature, and then under it, the set temperature. And then on the right-hand side, I'll have forecast and current outdoor temperature and high and low for the day and all those kinds of things, and rain, if there's going to be rain, things that will be actually useful for me to see when I walk out of a door um, or out of a room. Um, and then other modes that you can have... Um, I haven't really programmed at all, but they're essentially very, very easy to program now because um, the code has been written in a very kind of generic format. Um, so you can control whatever you like and add any number of modes to the system. I've also got this settings mode. If I double press one of the buttons, it takes me into settings mode and it allows me to re-download the settings um, and the values. Now, every time a value is updated, um, such as if I do it on my computer or on my iPhone, this will get updated in real time. So if someone else controls the lights, you're gonna see that um, value change. But let's say I wanted to uh, um, uh, you know, re-upload the names of the um, circuits, I can do that by entering into settings mode and hitting the word download. Uh, I've got a download, a slow download. Um, I need that for a reason I won't bother you with now. Um, and then I've got diagnostic mode, which I'll enter into now. Now this shows us um, all of the settings that um, there are and which ones have been downloaded. And if there's an N next to it, it means it hasn't been downloaded. Now circuit number six name has not been received, which is a big shame. So I'm going to press, or maybe it's because there isn't a circuit number six. Perhaps that's why I can't honestly remember. I'm downloading it and nothing much is happening. So I'm guessing that circuit number six isn't, uh, yeah, I'm guessing that's not. I'll come out of that mode. I'll go back into settings mode. And this also lets me reboot um, the Arduino, download the settings again, and then exit the mode as well, obviously. Another thing I can show you is what happens when the network connection drops out? Well, I'm gonna pull this without electrocuting myself because this is actually running at uh, 20 volts. And honestly, I don't know what the current is running at at the moment. It could be 600 milliamps for all I know. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I don't wanna touch it because uh, I have seen sparks coming out of this thing when I shorted it out. So I don't really wanna do anything bad. Um, so I've disconnected the network, obviously the thing is still powered because my POE's on there. Watch what happens after about 30 seconds of it not being connected, I'll just touch that, so 
I get a little frowny face in the corner saying, I've not had um, any updates to the time or to the levels in the last 10 seconds. So sort it out, mate. That's what it says. So as long as that frowny face is in the corner um, and it stays on even when the lights go off. <laughs> um, so what I'll do now is I'm going to plug it back in. Oops, sorry about that. Plug my network port back in. And does the frowny face disappear? And does the time update itself? I'm asking this as a rhetorical question. Although I appear to have asked a stupid question because obviously it hasn't updated. So what do I do? I can go into settings mode and uh, re-download everything. <clears throat> I'm going to download and hit Diag's go into Diag's mode. It says it has previously been downloaded. That's not very good, is it? No, it's still not getting anything. So I'm going to hit reboot and hope for the best. So when I reboot, this is what happens. The display still isn't initialized. That initializes a um, couple of seconds into setup routine. There we go. Minus one shows that it hasn't been downloaded. Now it's been downloaded. So all of this stuff just came on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll run that again so you can see that in more detail. I hit reboot. Um, this is the setup routine is running. And then the display runs and the settings get downloaded. Dosh, 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 dosh. There we go. That last one takes a while for some reason to download. Um, and the time, by the way, is actually being received over MQTT, which is probably a really stupid idea. I don't know. Um, but it blinking works. I tell you what, it's the, more accurate than my iPhone, um, <laughs> which is very funny. Um, anyway, there's an MQTT channel called Time, which I just literally send in plain text. 8th of January, 5.21pm. Um, it's probably a little bit lame, but hey, it gets updated from an NTP server every half a minute. I think it's quite cool, actually. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, pretty much sums up the whole project. Um, hope you like it. I can share some code with you, um, but probably not, not just yet. Um, cheerio, see you soon.